So with no further ado, um, with everybody who's watching, I'm talking to Dr. Woody Myers. He is currently the Democratic candidate for governor in the state of Indiana. Um, so much is going on right now nationally, but certainly within the state. So please, Dr. Myers, tell us all about who you are and how your historic bid again for governor is going. Well, first of all, Jordan, thank you so, so much uh, for making me one of your uh, guests, uh, for inviting me to be one of your guests tonight. I appreciate it. I, I enjoy talking uh, with you. You have a terrific family. Uh, and I just know that uh, you're, 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 do, you're doing your thing, and that's great. And uh, I, I, I enjoy seeing uh, uh, young folks like yourself achieving their goals. Uh, it's just terrific. Uh, and that's what I really want for all Hoosiers. I want them to be able to fulfill their their destinies, you know, the, the, uh, the, the uh, there's this thing called life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness that we're all supposed to be able to pursue. Well, right. not, every, not every Hoosier is able to do that. And that's why I kind of thought about, well, what, what is my job? What is my role in making that happen? And, and how can I best do that? After having spent an enormously wonderful career uh, in, uh, in healthcare management, leadership, taking care of patients and a whole variety of other things that we can talk about, I decided, you know, what, what would be the next step for a guy like me uh, to serve his state? And, and I said, well, why not run for governor? You know, there are, there are no African-American governors in America today. Zero, none. Wow. None. And, uh, and, and before that, there were three, I want to say? No, there are there, there two and a half, kind of. Uh, but there was Doug Wilder. Oh, I know Wilder. who the half is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doug Wilder in Virginia was the first uh, fully elected black governor in America. Uh, and then Deval Patrick in the great state of Commonwealth of Massachusetts. That's right. Uh, Deval is a friend of a fantastic attorney and uh, was a great governor in Massachusetts. And then uh, uh, um, David Patterson was a uh, was uh, governor of New York, uh, right. but he inherited that after. Uh, uh, yeah. That, so it, it wasn't an elected role. It was it was a, a role that he, uh, because of his position, was able to achieve, but. He didn't win a, a re-election, so uh, that's why I say two and a half. And right now, there's nobody. Uh, we've had an African American president, we've had a number of African American senators, uh, Congress people, but no governors uh, uh, today. And so I said, look, uh, let, let's not just uh, uh, fill that void, but let's do it in my home state of Indiana, the Great Hoosier State, uh, uh, where the car, where the corn grows tall and the cars go fast. Uh, that's, that's right. <laughs> And my home state as well. Um, Absolutely. I am still an Indiana registered voter. Actually, the Commonwealth is my adopted home. But, um, you know, there's really no place, I think, to work to ensure, of course, that effective electeds are uh, in office. You know, it's great to make history, as you said again, during our conversation sometime again. But it's even more important to ensure that while you're doing that, you're actually putting folks in a position to succeed. And so I, you know, I was reading the news. I've kept up with a lot that's going on with your race. And I saw that there's a very thin margin between you and the incumbent. And that obviously attests to your hard work. Um, and of course, what you've been doing on the ground, whatever that means nowadays, uh, because so much has changed with elections in light of the pandemic. But uh, it really does attest to your hard work. And I'm so curious, you know, what this means to you and what your plan is to bring this election home within the next few weeks? Well, we've got 48 days, 47 now to go uh, uh, for the election. I started this campaign uh, uh, 14 months and change uh, ago, and here we are now, 47 days to go. Uh, and I've learned so much uh, as I've traveled around the state, as I've met with people from around the world uh, who have been interested in our campaign, and I just now know that it's just so important to. Uh, for for the people who are not at the top of the pyramid, you know the the, uh, the and, and that's who I'm running for. If you are rich uh, and you got a business uh, and and you're at the top of the food chain, so to speak, in Indiana, you're doing fine, uh, even in this global pandemic. But if you're not in that top one percent or ten percent, uh, your life is very challenging in our state. Uh, our incomes are lower than our surrounding states. Uh, we have a number of challenges in uh, getting new jobs to come to our state. We've lost over 5,000 manufacturing jobs uh, in Indiana since COVID started. Our, our unemployment rate is, uh, 
supposed to be around 8%, but I know it's a lot higher than that. It's just the way they count unemployed folk have, have made it seem like it's not that bad. And 8% is a recession. Uh, and so we've got just a ton of issues, Jordan, that are not being acknowledged by my opponent uh, and that are hurting Hoosiers. And I just said, gosh darn it, you know, I, you know, I, I, you know, people say, Woody, why don't you just retire like everybody else did when they got to be your age? And I said, well, I tried. I did. <laughs> I tried. I went to the beach. I, I, I got out there and I dug my toes in the sand and I said, okay, <laughs> is, it, is this what retirement feels like? And I, just, I, I did it for like a, two hours. I tried really hard. <laughs> Uh, it can last I said, too long. I can't do this. This is not <laughs> me. And so I got back up and I got started thinking about how I should complete my career, what kind of contribution I wanted to make. And it, 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 as it turned out, uh, I, I wanted to be supportive of the next governor of Indiana. And I looked around and I said, oh my gosh, there's nobody uh, running that yeah. I think can do a better job than I, I can mm. do. Uh, so I said, okay, I'll throw my hat in the ring. We'll see what happens. And here it is now, 47 days to go. I am the nominee for governor in my home state of Indiana. I'm the only African-American in America running for governor today. I'm the only physician running for governor today, any party. Wow. Uh, here we are in the middle of a global pandemic and an and a, and a and a, and a racial uprising uh, because of the injustices of the murder of George Floyd. And I'm, I'm the only guy uh, running for governor in America today who happens to have those, uh, those characteristics of being a physician and being African-American. And, and I just know that, well, you, you, you couldn't have designed the, the uh, plot to this movie. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and so here, here I am uh, working as hard as I can uh, to attract uh, the 1.25 to 1.3 million voters that we're going to need to win this election here in Indiana. Uh, and so I'm going to give it my best shot for the next 47 days uh, so that we can get this thing done. And so, you know, you brought... Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You, you, you asked me who I was. So I was going to tell you a little bit about that, but yeah. go ahead with the next question. <laughs> No, I was going to say you brought me to my next question was, you know, tell us what you were doing before you went into retirement, because you're right, your background led you to a position where you could have just sat back and sort of got on the phone when folks had a call for you or a question <laughs> and gave them, of course, your advising. But I think you took a step beyond that to ensure that uh, people and no matter uh, what race or creed in Indiana were safe and uh, well governed. You know, I, I, I was I was having a good time. I was the uh, I had my own company, Myers Ventures LLC. I had invested in healthcare companies. I was a consultant to, to a variety of entities around the nation. I created the Mozambique Healthcare Consortium to provide better healthcare in the country of Mozambique, immediately north and east of South Africa. Uh, I spent a lot of time working on projects there. I was the chief medical officer of Ford Motor Company. Uh, when we had plants in 38 countries around the world. So I had a global presence. Uh, I've been the chief medical officer of three Blue Cross plans uh, nationwide. I was the CEO of a company that provides uh, uh, correctional health services uh, nationwide. And I mean, so I've done a lot of cool stuff. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was a, I was the associate director of the Medical Surgical Intensive Care Unit. I learned how to be an ICU physician because I wanted to be in the part of the hospital where they had the sickest patients. I figured if I'm gonna be in the hospital, I might as well uh, uh, work in the area where, where, where there was the most opportunity to, uh, to, to defeat death. Uh, and that's what the ICU is. It's a battleground, it's a war zone where the physicians and nurses are trying all day to beat, 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 beat that uh, grim reaper. Uh, and so that's where I spent my early, the early part of my career. But you know, when I was there, Jordan, I saw all these patients that came into the ICU with problems and diseases and issues that should have been prevented well before they got there. Uh, people that, uh, that uh, for instance, I had a guy who, uh, a 52 year old guy that everyone in the community loved. He was just the pill, every, smoked two packs a day. That was his only, that was his only issue. And of course he was dying of, of lung cancer. Right. I had this uh, 25 year old Haitian guy who would not give us a history uh, of what was going on in his life because he was more afraid of what would happen with his family than he was of letting us help him because he had HIV AIDS and didn't want us to know 
that he was gay and that he had used uh, he had used drugs. Uh, I had this um, this woman, 85 years old, who had had a, a a minor stroke, but she was in her apartment and, and was unable to get to a phone uh, and laid in the floor for a week before neighbors who hadn't seen her finally got the police to break down the door. Uh, and they went in and found her. And by the time they found her, she was dehydrated and infected. And we could have taken care of her if, if somebody had gotten her to us like the day she had it. But her family, you know, they were really mad at us because they had neglected mom. Uh, and if they had just come and taken care of her like they were supposed to, she might have lived. And, and, then I, and then I had this, the, maybe the saddest of all these patients was an eight month pregnant woman who uh, had been shot. And we never found out whether it was the husband that shot her or the boyfriend that shot her. And, and, but she wasn't brain dead. She was partially brain dead. So we were thinking and we were worried about how do we keep the baby alive long enough by keeping the mother alive long enough to deliver the baby by C-section to give the baby a shot. I mean, and I kept thinking in each one of these cases, we should have intervened as a society. We should have intervened with a public health intervention. We should have done something so that these people never ended up in my ICU. And I could either spend the next 30 years taking care of problems after they get to my ICU, or I could find ways to keep those patients from ever needing it. Uh, and I decided, you know, maybe I ought to kind of switch gears here. And so yeah. I just started thinking about uh, public health and healthcare leadership, yeah. healthcare management. So I, I, I became the physician health advisor for the United States Congress. I worked for Senator Ted Kennedy. Uh, the governor of my home state of Indiana appointed me health commissioner, your home state too. Uh, I became health commit. No, first Bob Orr. Bob Orr, I, okay. okay. I was a Democrat working for the oldest governor in America who was a Republican. Wow. And, th and then got reappointed by Evan Bayh, who was the youngest governor That's in America right. and yeah. a Democrat. <laughs> uh, and, and then I became the health commissioner of New York City, who had just elected its first African-American mayor, David Dinkins. Dinkins. Yeah. Uh, and then I went into the private sector and I became the chief medical officer for Blue Cross Blue Shield of Indiana. And then ultimately Blue Cross of California and then Blue Cross Blue Shield of Arizona down the road. And then, I mean, I've done a lot of cool stuff. I was the chief medical officer, director of healthcare management for the Ford Motor Company. So, well, why does Ford need a chief medical officer? <laughs> because every Ford plant has a clinic. Mm. Every Ford plant has doctors and nurses being on call right there to take care of people who get injured in the plant. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in some countries, uh, Jordan, I mean, in Czechoslovakia, we had to run a hospital for the country. They said, you can make cars oh. here, but you got to run the hospital too. I said, well, you, okay, we'll do that. Right. And, <laughs> and uh, I mean, we were, we were in all these countries around the world, and I just got an incredible, incredible opportunity to see healthcare practice in 20 of the 38 countries while I was uh, working at Ford. Uh, it was just an amazing, wonderful terrific experience. And all of these experiences, I said, you know, what are you supposed to do with that uh, when you get to be my, my at my stage of the game? You know, I, I'm a football guy, even though Indiana's a basketball state, right? I'm a football guy. And I, I'm right. kind of in the fourth quarter of, of my, mm -hmm. of, the, of the football game of life. I love uh, that metaphor. <laughs> and and I'm, I feel like I'm a couple touchdowns ahead. Yeah. Uh, I've got a wonderful family. I've had many great career uh, things happen to me. I've met a lot of terrific people. Mm -hmm. uh, I got two, two kids that are like not kids anymore. They're like adults. They got their own yeah. families. Uh, and actually, I've got five when you count my stepkids. So uh, mm -hmm. I, we, it's, and I got two grandkids. And I'm, so what, what are you supposed to do? And, and I was like, you know, do, do I want to like let the clock run out? No, I don't want to do that. I can't retire. I got to do something good. I said, I know what I'll do. I run for governor of the state of Indiana. It's not something <laughs> that I sat around and thought about. It's something that said that makes sense. I'm an executive. I've, I've been yeah. the CEO of a company. I've got been on the boards of a mall, of a number of companies. I know how the world works politically. Yeah. I've lived my life professionally at this junction of medicine, business, and politics. 
And, and healthcare today is medicine, business, and politics. Absolutely. The economy is medicine, business, and politics. K through 12 education is medicine, business, and politics. COVID-19 is medicine, medicine business, and business. politics. Yeah, yeah. George Floyd, if you think about it, is medicine, business, and politics. All of these things have come together in my life and my career to this point now, where here I am, 48 days away uh, from the most important election uh, that this country has had, and I believe our state has had. Uh, and now my goal is to, it's like I've been on a 14 month job interview. Uh, uh, every day I'm out there interviewing for this job. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm saying, okay, uh, Hoosiers, Indiana residents, you get, you get to pick the next governor. Uh, and so I'm, I'm putting myself out there and I, I just yeah. need 1.25 to 1.3 million of you okay. to check, <laughs> check the Woody Myers box on November 3rd or before especially yeah. if you're going to vote early, check that Woody Myers box. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I will bring a, a changed uh, uh, approach to all of the big problems we got in our state because we definitely need to fix Indiana. Indiana is sick. Yeah. Indiana, Indiana is in the ICU of states. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we need to give Indiana a shot of epinephrine and, and we, <laughs> we need to start CPR on our state. Uh, because we've got all kind of problems, uh, Jordan, that we got to get fixed. You know, I don't think, uh, yeah, you might have a calling in poetry that we didn't know about. So we'll have to talk about that on the next interview, because in all seriousness, you so beautifully articulated metaphorically, I think, uh, like you said, the state of things in our, uh, in our home state, you know, we love Indiana, but the reality is that young black and brown folks are suffering. They really are children don't have access to health care. This has been an issue since I was a kid, you know, in the state. And uh, education is something that, you know, young black and brown kids in the state may or may not have a chance to get a good education. So that, that's something that remains an issue. These are just things that I understand you are really champion, champion, championing. And I also know that, you know, you got the endorsement of Vice President Joe Biden, who similarly taking these issues um, and really hitting the trail to help people understand what his plan is. He recently got his endorsement. And I'm wondering, as concerned as you are with the state of things in Indiana, does it make you somewhat hopeful that you have his support? And of course, uh, that you see someone running uh, who is really intentional about uniting the country, so to speak, this November. It is a very, it's a very positive sign for our campaign. I'm very grateful. Uh, to have Vice President, soon to be President Biden's uh, support. Uh, and uh, I just know that uh, people will look at that and say, wow, this, 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 this candidacy is for real. Uh, and, uh, and it's a big plus for us. And I'm, I, again, I'm, I'm glad that he's made that decision to help us. So uh, I, I just look at the, uh, at the state of our, uh, of our state and uh, we have to ask ourselves some very hard questions, uh, Jordan. So why is it in 2020, that our state of Indiana is the third worst state in America for maternal mortality. That's moms dying at childbirth and or in the first year behind Louisiana and Georgia. Number three in the, work, in, the, in the wrong category. Why is it that we're the seventh worst state in infant mortality? Ma babies dying in the first year of life or at birth. And I mean, they're really, it, this is like, it's inconceivable to me that in 2020, that's not on the front page of the newspaper every single day uh, it, because it's just so criminal that we haven't figured out as a state the right way to approach this. We've had Republican governors leading Indiana for 16 years and they have yet to prioritize fixing these problems. Wow. I mean, I think 16 years is a pretty good amount of time to actually do something to fix though, and, and they haven't done it. And we want to give the guy another term? Excuse me? On what planet does that look like a good job? Yeah. Not yeah. this one. Uh, and so I, I just said, I, I'm a physician. <laughs> I've been involved in healthcare leadership and management. I know how the world works. Yeah. Uh, why not try something different, Indiana? Why not look at it for a new direction? Our teachers you can't find a teacher in Indiana today. I haven't found one who thinks things are going well. Not one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, 
salaries used to be at the top level, Jordan. Now they're at the bottom in terms of increases. The bottom. 51 out of 50 states, because they count District of Columbia. 51 out of 50 in terms of teacher salary increases. And what do we spend our time doing? Testing with these crazy programs that people's friends get these contracts. Uh, and, and, and they create these testing programs that just don't work. And, and, then, and then we, you know, we put these very expensive multi-million dollar programs in place. And then when the program doesn't work, then the legislature passes a bill that says, oh, well, never mind. We, we didn't mean it. Uh, the legislature then passes bills that say teachers have to take extra study credit, do things that have nothing to do with teaching just because they, somebody in the legislature thought that's a good idea for teachers to spend their free time doing stuff that they thought right. was good. Uh, as if teachers aren't spending enough time during the day doing what they think. And then we won't pay them for what they do do. Uh, it's just right. nuts. Well, and, 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 it, and, it, and it infuriates our teachers uh, and it just, and our kids are, are caught in between. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, achievement gaps, uh, especially uh, for African-American children, for, for Latinx children uh, in our state that haven't been fixed, haven't been addressed. There's no good plans to do anything. Uh, our governor keeps promising, well, we're going to put a study commission together. And when does the study commission offer its report? In 2021. Excuse me, when you're at the bottom of the list in terms of teacher salaries, I can tell you one of the things you should do now. That's fix <laughs> the salary yeah. issue, you know? Some uh, more it's, urgency. It's disingenuous and it's just criminal. It's wrong as far as I'm concerned. And, the, and either I could sit around and throw things at the television set and write op-eds all, all day, or I could get in there and roll my sleeves up and do something about it. And I decided that uh, the... the I would not be silent, that I would use my voice, I would use the experiences that I've had, uh, and uh, I would offer a different uh, version of leadership to my home state. You know, I've been very fortunate. I've had a great education, uh, and uh, I, I've been in, involved in very high-level ex experiences now for like 30 years, uh, and uh, I, I, I am not afraid. Uh, and I think that's the number one thing you have to, 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 to ask yourself, uh, or do you have the courage to say what needs to be said and do what needs to be done? And Absolutely. that was a hard question. Uh, yeah. it's a lot easier to retire. Uh, and I said, yes, Woodrow, you do have the courage to say what needs to be said, do what needs to be done. Uh, and, uh, and, and let them say what they want about me. Let, let, let them start their negative ads campaign. I know that's coming. Uh, but you know what, you know, I, I'll survive uh, and, and I will offer my services to my state uh, and, 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 and change the things that need to be changed, say the things that need to be said. Uh, and uh, hopefully if we get 1.25 to 1.3 million people to agree, uh, we can set off on a new direction uh, for the, the, the great state of Indiana, my home state. Yeah, and that's no small feat, but it seems like you are inching closer and closer towards that. Uh, you know, one uh, last question I have for you, because I did tell you I'd be mindful of your e evening. Um, you know, a lot of folks are watching who are obviously engaged in Indiana politics. A lot of people are watching who are not, and for various reasons, but particularly a lot of young black and brown people are watching, wondering what it actually means to you, of course, uh, not only to run to become the first black governor of the state, but run to make something different and mm -hmm. run to make sure that we experience different government as you so articulated. So I'd like you just, of course, you've talked a lot about the issues that you see with the current administration, but walk us through what a Wood a Myers loss in administration will look like, of course, for young black and brown people, but for all Hoosiers. Well, it will be the most diverse administration in the history of, uh, of uh, the United States, period. Uh, yes. You know, the governor of the state of Indiana, Jordan, appoints over a thousand people to boards, commissions, and jobs. Uh, and I'm going to be looking for a, a lot of talented Hoosiers uh, 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 of a very diverse backgrounds, uh, uh, able, temporarily abled, disabled, all of the above, 
uh, uh, in order to make our state a better place. And because we're going to bring a, a variety of viewpoints and we're going to do what's best for the people of, uh, of the state. So I look forward to that opportunity. I look forward to setting a good example. Uh, you know, one, one of the things that uh, that I, I look at myself as is the the coach of the team of Team Indiana. Yeah, uh, I love and, that. Uh, and and, and uh, I I know that uh, I got I got to recruit some new some some rookies. Uh, and, and back in the day, I was a rookie. Uh, <laughs> as when I was Full a circle, health right? I, when I was a health commissioner, but Governor Bob Orr, the oldest governor in America, appointed me Woody Myers, a Democrat, thirty years old. Uh, to be his health commissioner. I had 2,800 employees, ran five institutions for the state of Indiana, had a $234 million budget. Uh, and I didn't wow. know to be afraid. I didn't know enough to be afraid. I just said, oh my goodness, we got a lot of work to do here. Yeah. Uh, and I found the best people I could uh, to, to help me. And we just had, we, we did everything we could think to do to make Indiana's healthcare better. And, and, and so I want to find th th those folks that are that fit that kind of a genre and bring them in. And, and I want to coach them. Uh, I want I want them to run the ball. I want them to throw the ball. I want them to block and tackle. Uh, and, and, and I want a great set of assistant coaches to create a new playbook. Indiana definitely needs a new playbook because if we keep running the same plays we've been running, we're going to keep getting the same results and, and we're at the bottom of the standings right now. Mm -hmm. And so we need a new playbook uh, to, to, to run our state. And, and so I just want to, I want to coach that new team, right? I, I want to make that new team uh, the, the, the envy of the league. I want us to rise to the top of the standings and, and, and you know, in a, in a very friendly way, I want to beat those guys in Illinois. No, I want to beat those guys in Michigan. I want to beat Friendly those competition. I want to beat Ohio, and I really want to beat Kentucky. You know? <laughs> I want Indiana to win that competition yeah. of the Midwest, our part of the of the of the of the, of the, uh, of the country, uh, as we move forward. I want us to get the the good jobs in our state. I want us to overachieve with respect to education. I want our, our kids graduate from high school to see that that's just step one, not the final yeah. step. You got to get a two-year degree in something important. You got to go to trade school to learn to trade. You got to go to college. You got to do something other than just graduate from high school. It doesn't yeah. work to do that anymore. When I graduated from high school, all you needed was a strong back. You went down to the foundry to the plant. Oh, you got a strong back. We'll hire you. Now, <laughs> now you got to have now you've got to have a strong brain yeah. because you've got to run the robots that run the foundry. Mm -hmm. And in order to run those robots, you, you got to know something about advanced manufacturing, computer technology. And so we got to get our kids in this new mode. Uh, and, and, and before I get too far along this line, you know, I, 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 want, to, I want to give a shout out to the fine arts as well. Music and art. Yeah. Uh, 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 I mean, you, you cannot live in society without great music and wonderful art. Yes. And, and so, yes, STEM is important. I'm a STEM guy. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Uh, my, uh, my, my, uh, my brother is a professional musician in uh, California. He plays in a couple bands out in your area. And, and, oh, in Los goodness. Angeles. He plays wow. up in Northern California. I mean, nobody's actually playing right now because of COVID. They're not doing a lot of live music. But he's been in uh, bands in Northern California, Southern California. He's, he's been a jazz musician all of his life. Now, he had a day job, too. Uh, but, <laughs> but had he not had uh, an opportunity to learn how to blow the saxophone uh, in, in, uh, in, in high school, he wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have made the four or five CDs that he's made. Wow. Uh, yeah. uh, and so I just know that we've got to make sure that our kids get an opportunity to excel. And that's why we've got to help our teachers because what teachers do is they find your talent and they help you to understand what your talent is. Uh, and and ha finding the, the, a, a kid's talent, nothing can be, I, I think that's probably one of the most fun things you could do and see that kid yeah. grow and, and, and do well as a result. I had some great teachers uh, in IP, Indianapolis public schools and I got lucky. I, had a, I remember my first grade teacher, Mrs. Colbert, my second grade teacher, Mrs. Patterson. Uh, I, I, I remember my high school teacher, Mr. Black, who taught my biology class, uh, who was terrific. Wow. Uh, I remember Mr. Roy Aberson, who taught my government class. And here it is, like 
Mr. Mr. Black said, what do you want to think about medicine? And Mr. Aberson said, you know, public policy can change a lot of things. Uh, and so now what have I done? I've put together Mr. Black and Mr. Aberson's uh, comments to me, and, and here I am a physician running for governor uh, in the state of Indiana. Uh, and so you know, life kind of comes full circle, you know? Uh, I was and, just going to say, yeah, it seems like things have really just kind of created a full circle for you. And so I've, I've been very fortunate, and, and, uh, and I just know that if, if I get this opportunity, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to invest uh, uh, all the, the energy I have in, uh, in making sure that, that uh, kids that grew up in my neighborhood, I grew up in 46218. That's Martindale Brightwood. Uh, that's one of the, the, the toughest areas uh, in Indianapolis, and that's where I grew up. Uh, and uh, I just know that there are right now some kids out in Martindale Brightwood uh, who have given the right opportunity and the right encouragement uh, and, and the right kind of tough love and, and, and kind love as well uh, right. that, that, that they can achieve wonderful things. And, and, and I want to tell them that. I want to go into school 110, school 56, school, all, all of those schools out in Martindale Brightwood and say to those kids, uh, at, at the kids at Tech and the kids at Short Ridge, the kids at, at, at Arlington, and then the kids at Gary Roosevelt, the kids at Muncie That's Central, right. the kids at Evansville. Uh, at, uh, they used to be Evansville Bossy. I think there's some new Evansville schools now. My, my information is old. At Terre Haute North. Terre Haute South, it used to be Terre Haute Garfield, Terre Haute Gerstmeyer, uh, South Bend Central. Those are the places that I want to go to, uh, including the small rural high schools as well, and say to those children, hey, look, uh, you know, given where we are in society today, given these opportunities that exist out here in the world to do good, you guys are living in an, an incredibly marvelous, wonderful time. Take advantage of it. Learn all you can learn, do good work, and you too can be successful, provide for your family, and live a great life in the great state of Indiana. Yeah, you know, Dr. Myers, you're such an incredible example of, you know, leadership, intelligence, but really stewardship. I think that's something as, uh, you know, Black folks, we don't talk about enough. You've articulated that you have the opportunity and you brush by, you know, the fact that you've got your MBA from Stanford and you've had the opportunity to get medical training from Harvard. I mean, you've seen incredible heights, but you have really made it back to square one, which is serving your community. We don't talk about that enough. Um, and I really do hope that the rest of, you know, this trail and the rest of this bid uh, is fruitful to you, of course. Uh, you know, you would like to win and, and that's the obvious goal, but really I hope that you're able to continue connecting with folks um, and sort of, selling and sharing that message of hope with them. I, you know, I don't think that we have seen that enough, of course, at the national level, but even at the statewide level. And so I would really ask you, of course, to remind people um, all of the information that they need to know about election day, but I would also like for you to tell them where they can stay in touch with you. I know that the final sure. stretch is going to require a lot. Um, so please let them know where they can submit a donation or just stay in touch with your campaign and all of the things that uh, you and Lawson are doing. Well, thank you for that. Uh, and, and by the way, I would be remiss if I didn't congratulate your mom and your dad on raising oh, a, thank terrific, you. a terrific, <laughs> thank they you. have been terrific public servants, both of them. Uh, and, and they, and I could see that in, in, in you. So uh, they did, they did, I give them both an A. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, bet, I bet your mom gets a little bit more of the grade than it. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just going to guess that. I don't want to start any trouble. <laughs> but, because I, I think they're yeah, both she terrific. She's, she's been the hardest on me, so she absolutely does. <laughs> but I, I, I just know that uh, we, 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 uh, we appreciate you and, and what you're able to contribute in your, in your role. Uh, uh, but but, but you. answer your question, drwoodymyers.com. That's our website. It's right behind me. Uh, and if you just put it in Google now, uh, they'll, they'll take you to our YouTube or our Instagram or our, our, our Twitter or our Facebook, uh, where we have all kinds of groups now that are helping us out, supporting us. And so you can donate 
uh, through any of those links. We've got a couple of videos out on YouTube that people seem to really like. Uh, one called A Broken System, where I talk about my experiences as a young physician. Uh, uh, and uh, people think of, of racial uh, injustice being part of the criminal justice system. Unfortunately, it's not limited to criminal justice system. It's in medicine, too. It, and right. Way too much of it in, in medicine. And I talk about that. Uh, so th that, that's where people can sign up to volunteer. Uh, we, we're not doing the kind of door-to-door -door that typically happens in campaigns, but we are doing phone banking. Uh, and with, t with technology today, you could be anywhere, including Los Angeles. Uh, <laughs> and, and you can phone bank uh, for Dr. Woody Myers and, and Linda Lawson's campaign uh, 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 from L.A. Uh, so, uh, in, or anywhere else uh, in, 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 the, in the country. So those are ways for people to help us. We appreciate all the help we can get. These are difficult times. COVID-19 has, has changed the way that we we campaign. It's, it's certainly changed our state in so many uh, ways that uh, have been negative. Uh, it's hurt our economy. Uh, and it's changed the way we think about schools and schooling. All of those things uh, uh, I want to tackle head on. Uh, I, I want to help Indiana become the nation's leader in thinking about these challenging issues. That's what I want for my state. Uh, yeah. You know, Indiana has this reputation, oh, if it's good enough, it's good good enough is no longer good enough here in indiana we we've got to excel and lead and and that's what i want us to do so thank you jordan for this wonderful opportunity i, yeah, I appreciate you. your time uh no, I appreciate congratulations on your on your roles as well no i appreciate you and i'll let our audience in on a little tip i put you through a little bit of drama earlier with the wi-fi so i appreciate your patience <laughs> um and i mean in all seriousness you know very well that politicking doesn't endorse candidates but we do endorse causes and everything that you've articulated especially leading the state away from mediocrity especially when it's so critical i think is inspiring and so um we continue to lift you up as, as you continue to chase history and of course uh to just bring folks along with you on the ride to rise up above anything less uh, than what we deserve. And so I'll see you after November 3rd, maybe before then, but please, best of luck. Uh, Thank you. We'll have you back again. It, it's so good to see you again. Seriously, I would love to hear from you once you're off the trail 